Module 2, Operational Analysis for Single Lane Roundabouts. Roundabout Operations. Roundabouts bring together conflicting traffic streams at reduced speeds, allowing the streams to safely cross paths, traverse the roundabout, and exit. Modern roundabouts do not have merging or weaving between conflicting traffic streams. Vehicles at each approach must yield right away to circulating vehicles and accept gaps in circulating traffic. Compactness of circle size and geometric speed control make it possible to establish priority to circulating traffic. The red car yields to the circulating blue car and enters when there is an acceptable gap. Vehicles entering the roundabout should follow a slow, natural path. The conflict space where vehicles cross paths should be compact and well-defined. And roundabouts should not include a parallel left curve section within the roundabout between the entry and exit. Roundabout capacity. The capacity of a roundabout entry depends on two factors. Circulating flow in the roundabout that conflicts with the entry flow. So the more traffic circulating in a roundabout, the harder it's going to be uh, to enter into the roundabout. And the second factor is the number of entering lanes on the approach to the circulatory roadway. So a two-lane entry will have more capacity than a single-lane entry. So more vehicles will be able to enter into the roundabout for every gap that there is within the circulatory vehicles. This table shows the typical annual average daily traffic for a four-leg roundabout. Single-lane roundabouts typically can accommodate you know, up to 25,000 vehicles and a multi-lane or two-lane two -lane entry can accommodate up to 45,000 vehicles. Operational analysis. Analysis of all peak hour periods is critical to assess the level of performance at each entry and the roundabout as a whole. So this will include your AM, your PM peak hours, maybe there's special events, maybe there's a Saturday midday, so you need to make sure that your roundabout uh, performs well for all peak periods. Each approach leg of the roundabout is evaluated individually to determine the number of entry lanes required. The number of lanes within the circulatory roadway is based on the number of lanes needed to provide lane continuity. So as you can see with the, the graphic on the right here that the circulatory roadway does not need to be consistent. So if you have a single lane entry, you only need to have single lane circulating. And you can see here that we have a two lane entry and therefore we've got two lanes circulating. So just because you have a two lane entry in one leg does not mean that the rest of the roundabout needs to be two lanes. So we need to balance the traffic use of each lane, otherwise some lanes may be overloaded while others are underutilized. Roundabouts are to be analyzed with HCM procedures using one of two Florida Department of Transportation approved analysis tools. That includes HCS, which can model up to four approach legs, one or two lane entries, and one lane partial right turn bypass lanes. SIDRA in HCM mode can model up to eight approach legs, one or two lane entries, and one or two lane partial right turn bypass lanes. So when we get into a little more complicated locations or higher volume locations, and you need to have three lanes potentially on an entry, that's when you'll move into SIDRA uh, intersection and you'll use the standard mode. So this will use Australian equations. And when you're using standard mode, Florida DOT recommends uh, using an environmental factor of 1.1. If you have a nearby signal or roundabout, or maybe you have a you know, hawk or any type of pedestrian signal where you want to analyze the impacts of that. That's when you could use a micro simulation. Uh, VISM, uh, what we recommend is that the model needs to be calibrated to match those HCM or SIDRA results first. Then you go in and you add in the adjacent intersections or those pedestrian signals, and then see what the results are after that analysis. Highway Capacity Manual 6th Edition, or HCM. The analytical procedures for the analysis of roundabouts is provided in Chapter 22 of the HCM. Capacity of a roundabout approach is directly influenced by flow patterns. So those flow patterns include the vehicles entering 
into the roundabout, vehicles circulating within the roundabout, and then vehicles exiting out of the roundabout. At this point in time, the HCM equations do not include the amount, number of vehicles exiting from the roundabout. Critical headway, also referred to as critical gap, and follow-up headway are the driver behavior parameters that influence the capacity of a roundabout approach and the roundabout as a whole. Let's take a look at critical headway, and that is the smallest gap in the circulating traffic that an entering driver would accept to enter the roundabout. So you have vehicles one and two on the left, and the green vehicle on the bottom is determining whether or not there's a large enough gap in between those two vehicles that they can enter safely into the roundabout. That is your critical headway. The follow-up headway is, again, you've got your green vehicles, this time both A and B. And what we're looking at with the follow-up headway is the time between two successive entering vehicles accepting the same gap in circulating traffic. So what type of headway does uh, vehicle B need to have in order for it to follow along with A and enter into to the roundabout as well. Shown in this chart are the critical and follow-up headway values uh, that the HCM 6th edition utilizes. It's not necessarily anything you need to memorize. It, they are included in the software packages, but the point of showing this is that there are different critical and follow-up headway values depending on the lane configuration. So if you have a single lane approach with single lane circulating, you're gonna have you know, set critical follow-up and headway values, which are gonna be different than if you've got two lanes entering and two lanes circulating. And even there's different values for the left lane compared to the right lane of two lane entries. Again, this is all included in the software, not necessarily something you need to memorize, but it's important as the you know as someone doing the analysis to understand why, let's say you're looking at a two-lane roundabout, the left lane is going to have different operations than the right lane. So we take a look at the capacity model equation, and within that equation is the conflicting flow, so the amount of vehicles circulating in front of a particular entry and then the critical and follow-up headway values. Level of service criteria. So we're gonna use the same basic control delay formulation and with two-way and all-way stop controlled intersections. So we're gonna be consistent with unsignalized intersections. And we wanna make sure that we're providing 35 seconds of delay or less, which is gonna be giving us our level service D or better. We need to understand the limitations of the HCM model and that we may need to use alternative tools at some point in time. And that may be, that's when we have more than two entry lanes that are needed on an approach. Let's say we've got some flared entries where we're looking to model that where you're taking a single lane and flaring it out to two lanes and that's happening in a short distance. Maybe you've got locations with high pedestrians or bicycle activity. Uh, you're going to have that pedestrian signal or hybrid beacon at the crosswalk, which could impact the operations. Maybe at certain locations, you've got a metering signal on one or more of the approaches. Or, again, you're adjacent to signal or a roundabout. So let's take a look at the operational analysis methodology. And this is a little flow chart that I think really outlines well the procedure for doing the analysis for, for roundabouts. We're always going to gather those volumes, get out and get some good counts. We're going to have the peak hour factor, and we're going to uh, also know our truck percentages. Uh, both those factors have pretty big influence on the operations. And in the Florida uh, Department of Transportation, we're looking out at 20 years. So we'll take our counts, and we're going to forecast that out 20 years past our, our design. So if we know that very low volume, no real issues here, we know it's going to be a single lane roundabout, then we can go in and complete our operational analysis using those HCM equations, and we'll prepare a report on the operational analysis. It's when we don't know if it's a single lane or a multi-lane where we're going to need to do some more, some more thinking. 
And what we're going to recommend is that we follow this particular process, which we're going to enter the forecasted peak hour volumes into a traffic flow worksheet. And we'll walk through that in a little bit here. We're going to determine the number of entry lanes and the overall lane configuration. Again, each leg of the roundabout could be different. Each entry could be different. And then we're going to draw this lane configuration sketch. And then once we've completed that lane configuration sketch and we know what we're going to be modeling, that's when we'll go again and do the operational analysis and then complete our report. So we're going to go gather traffic data, no different than any other intersection, obtain those 12-hour counts for the intersection, establish the peak hours. We're going to obtain counts for the off-peak, midday, or special events, calculate the peak hour factor for each period, determine truck percentages by approach, include the number of uh, and, and percentage of bicycles and pedestrians, and the design year turning volume shall be developed from the existing traffic counts. And as I had mentioned, there's a 20-year design traffic volumes for roundabout evaluation and design. Shown on the right is our example of the traffic flow worksheet. The top portion includes the location where we're going to enter in all of our traffic volume information, peak hour factor, truck percentages. The middle portion is where our lane configuration sketch is going to go. And then the bottom portion is where we will include uh, just gen general project information. This uh, worksheet exhibit is going to be a nice thing to include in our operational report. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and enter in our forecasted traffic volumes into the worksheet and in into that top portion where we're going to provide our design year peak hour turning volumes for AM and PM, weekend or special events. You may need to include more than one of these sheets if you do have multiple, more than two peak hours. But what I would do is also caution you that before starting the capacity analysis, the, the traffic forecast should be checked for reasonableness by a person who is familiar with the site. Do these traffic volumes make sense? Are these volumes really going to quadruple, for instance, over the next 20 years? Are they being too aggressive or maybe not aggressive enough? So you want to make sure you're analyzing good traffic data. So we're going to go ahead and enter those AM and PM flows uh, into that spreadsheet. We're going to check for number of lanes. Uh, we're going to check for exclusive lanes. We're going to sketch that lane configuration in that middle section, and we want to evaluate the complexity of each option. So AM may have a different uh, requirement or need than PM, and we need to put those together and come up with one lane configuration that works for both. And we want to make sure that uh, it's not too complex if it doesn't need to be. Once we figure out that lane configuration, we're going to analyze uh, potentially multiple options using HCM equations or if it's more complex, uh, SIDRA. We're going to test those exclusive lanes and we're going to consider staging for future capacity expansion. Can you build a single lane now and in the future expand it to multi-lane? And then our next step is going to be to refine our lane configuration sketch. So here's what the traffic flow worksheet looks like. You can see that there is a location for AM and PM. We're going to tell what peak hour we're analyzing, in this case, the 2040. We have street names for the different roadways. We have a location to enter the peak hour factor. We also have uh, boxes to enter in, the, enter in the truck percentages per leg. And then all of the yellow boxes are the ones where you'll you'll enter in the uh, the turning movements. For instance, the U-turn, the left, the through, and the right for this this south leg. So you're going to do that for the AM and the PM for each for each peak hour. So let's take a quick look at the estimated capacity. This is going to be helpful when we're trying to figure if we're having a single lane entry or a two lane entry or, or more. So what we want to look at is, is the sum of the entering, this VE, plus the circulating VC traffic at each entry point. So again, looking at um, entry by entry here. 
So if we take those two numbers and we add them together and they're less than a thousand vehicles, then a single lane roundabout should work or a single lane entry at this particular location should work. If we're between 1,000 and 1,300, then a single lane may work. We're going to want to check and just make sure of that through our analysis. But if we start getting over that uh, 1,300, then more than likely we're going to need a two lane. And if we get in over that 1,800, then uh, you may need more than two lanes. So let's take a look at an example here of the traffic flow worksheet. This one's been all filled in. And what we're looking at are these... Uh, the volumes entering. So that total volume entering is 425 for this west leg or eastbound entry. And we have 450 vehicles circulating. So that 425 plus the 450 gives us 875. So these pink boxes all the way around are the, are the volumes or the numbers that we're going to be looking at to determine if that particular entry needs to be single lane. So that combination is 875. So we're going to say that the west leg only needs to be a single lane entry. The south leg has 325 vehicles entering and only 200 vehicles circulating. So that gives us 525. So again, the south leg really only needs to be a single lane entry. If we take a look at the east leg, we have 800 vehicles entering, 300 circulating, so we're 1,100 vehicles is a combination. So that's over that 1,000 vehicles. Probably a single lane is still going to work, but it's something we're going to want to keep in mind when we take a look at the analysis. And then the north leg, when we add those volumes together, we get 1,200. So again, that one's going to be potentially getting into... Um, Will the single lane work or not? So we're going to have to take a close look at the analysis. But what you'd always want to do is start conservatively, uh, knowing that we want to start with only single lane or only construct single lane roundabouts if we need to. We do not want to build multi lanes unless we absolutely have to. All right, let's go through an example problem together. We're gonna, our goal here is to determine our lane configuration and walk through all of the steps and then go through the operational analysis. After the operational analysis is complete and we know what the roundabout's gonna look like, that's when we can start uh, moving in and start getting into CAD and doing our design. So let's take a look at this, this example problem. On the left here in the graph, or in the box here, I should say, shows the turning movements that you'll get. You'll have some AM and PM peak hour turning movements that are shown for each leg, your lefts, your throughs, and your rights for your AM and your PM. And you also will need to have, as we had mentioned, the truck percentages as well as the peak hour factor. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to take those volumes, those are our forecasted volumes. We're going to enter them into the traffic flow worksheet, and we're going to fill in the yellow highlighted boxes, and I'll show you those yellow boxes here in a second. And then based on our uh, quick little filling that in and looking at some of the volumes, we're going to sketch a lane configuration based on estimated capacity limits. Here is the traffic flow worksheet, and what where we're going to be looking to determine that lane configuration. You can see here are the yellow boxes that we're referring to for filling in all of the different movements. We've got our rights, throughs, lefts, as well as U-turns. We have our peak hour factors that we're going to want to fill in. We're going to have our truck percentages as well for each, each leg. You can see that this is split into an AM and PM, and you may need to do additional uh, spreadsheets that include off-peak, you know, or, or other types of uh, periods that may influence what the roundabout looks like. And we're going to label what uh, design year we're looking at, or uh, forecast year. In this case, we're looking at 2040 for our peak hour. So that's what the, the top part of that uh, traffic flow worksheet looks like. Here again is the estimated capacity limits that we went through, showing the capacity of a single lane entry being around that 1,000 to 1,300 vehicles. So this is a number that we're going to need to keep in mind as we go, go through our exercise today.
So let's determine the lane configuration. We've gone through and taken those volumes that were shown uh, previously, and we've gone in and we've entered them into, into our, our spreadsheet. We're looking at the AM period first. We've got our We've got our peak power factors entered, and we also have our truck percentages entered. So we can have a one nice, easy location to look at when we when we move in to do that operational analysis. But before we do that analysis, we need to know if we're doing a single lane or we're going to do a multi-lane uh, roundabout. And again, we're always going to want to start with single lane. We don't want to build a multi-lane roundabout unless we need to. We don't want to add complexity and additional conflict points unless we need to. So we're always going to try and build the least number of lanes as possible. So let's take a look at this uh, roundabout. We have 1,020 for the combination of the vehicles entering, going against the vehicle circulating. So we have that 1,020, and based on that 1,000 to 300, a single lane entry should work at this particular location. So we're going to draw that as a single lane entry, or at least start with that for our analysis. For westbound, we've got 695, so that also should be single lane entry. South leg, 905. Single lane is all we should need there as well. And then we have 875. So again, only a single lane entry should be needed there. So that is for the AM period. We need to look at all different peak periods. So we're going to take a look at the PM as well in this exercise. And we see that we have 1,020 there. So again, that should only need to be a single lane entry for the west leg. The east leg has 985 entering, circulating, conflicting there. And that as well should only need to be a single lane. 995 for vehicles entering on that south leg below 1,000. So single lane should work there. And then we have 970 for the north leg or southbound. So again, that should only need to be a single lane. So we took a look at both the AM and the PM peak hours and have determined that single lane entries should work at all locations. So we'll go ahead and do a pretty simple lane configuration, which is just a single lane roundabout. And we'll use this when we move into doing our operational analysis. We know that we're going to start with only single lanes. We're not going to go into HCS or how to do that, but if we were to look at the operational results, by entering those volumes in and going through the program, we'll see that in the AM, that overall we are getting 14.9 seconds of delay and an overall intersection um, level of service of B. The line above it shows the delay and level of service for each leg. You can see that for here, this is the eastbound entry where we're anticipated to get a level of service C with 21.2 seconds of delay. And if you look to the right, there's westbound, northbound, southbound, and you can get your different levels of service and delay. So if we, that's for the AM, and again for the PM, very similar, same thing, where we've got now 18.9 seconds of delay overall for the intersection, which shows that we're having level of service C. And again, above that, we have, in this case for westbound, we have 19 seconds of delay with level service C. So our operational analysis based on a single lane roundabout at this location shows uh, less than 35 seconds of delay. And therefore, single lane roundabout would work well at this location. That ends our exercise for uh, single lane operational analysis. We'll get into some more complexities when we get into the multi-lane roundabout section. But this concludes Module 2, Operational Analysis for Single Lane Roundabouts.